What if I told you that I can power your smartphone from the very seat you are sitting in? Or better, what if I told you that people can generate electricity from themselves? Well, you would be thinking, how can I generate electricity from my own body? I mean, there's solar energy, there's wind energy, there's coal, but energy from myself? I mean, that's unheard of. However, you all have to understand one fundamental concept that's inside every single individual in this auditorium, body heat. Body heat is like a strategically placed pawn on a chessboard. You see, the average human emits about 100 wor oh, watts of electricity per hour, enough to power a light bulb. However, if we were just able to extract 5% of that available energy, over the course of time, we could power an entire house. But then again, you would ask the same type of question. How can one person power an entire house? Or how can one person even generate so much electricity? Well, I can tell you that 200 people in this auditorium generating 5% of their electricity is enough to power this entire room, effectively turning our strategically placed pawn into a queen. So you can say goodbye to using solar energy and wind energy and coal because the energy of the future will be powered by us using our own bodies. Welcome to a concept known as thermoelectricity. Now, after coming up with our crazy idea, we decided to go to a place where we thought we could find all the answers, Google. Now, after searching for quite some time, we eventually found a possible solution, the Seebeck effect. The Seebeck effect involves using two semiconductors to generate electricity. One conductor is placed in high temperatures or high amounts of heat, while the other semiconductor is kept cool. Thus, this creates a temperature difference. And as this temperature difference starts to get higher and higher, our electrons start to get more and more energized. Now, after reaching a constant temperature difference, a flow of moving electrons is created, or as we know it as, electricity. What we liked about the Seebeck effect is that seemingly, all you have to do is put two metal plates together, and you can generate electricity. But these metal plates can also be thin, as thin as your iPhone, but at the same time, only a square inch in area. However, we soon reached our first hurdle, in that we began to ask ourselves many questions, including, how can we apply such an abstract concept into the real world? And how can we apply this into people's everyday lives? Well, you've all been sitting in these chairs for the entire day, haven't you? And at the same time, have been releasing body heat. So couldn't we use that body heat that you've all been releasing to electrify this entire facility? In the same way, couldn't we use the mattress that you sleep on every night? Or the desk you work at every day? Or the fireplace that you read by? In essence, the Seebeck effect applies anywhere where there are people. So we then started to make our first prototype. And at first, it was a big hot mess. But after regulating voltages, creating heat sinks, spending weeks researching, and fixing problems, we finally came up with our first proof of concept, the Model A. And what we liked about the Model A, compared to the other typical thermoelectric generators, is that the Model A is small, inexpensive, and can be applicable to in any environment without hindering its efficiency. In addition, the Model A can connect to other modules in the same way Apple's products interact with one another. The versatility of the Model A, however, is what makes it able to change the world. And not, not that only that we can power homes and buildings and warehouses and skyscrapers, but we could also help aid humanitarian causes. All over America, people suffer from the worst of Mother Nature. Hurricanes, forest fires, earthquakes. And all of these disasters are associated with losing electricity for weeks upon weeks. So let's think about this. What if the Model A had been present for the people suffering from Hurricane Sandy and Hurricane Katrina? Wouldn't their lives have been made so much easier, or if not better, with the Model A present? And at the same time, let's think more humanitarian. What if the Model A had been present for the refugees in Syria and Rohingya, who are fleeing war and persecution? Wouldn't many lives have been saved and made easier if our technology had been present at that time? Simultaneously, 
we need to address the millions of people throughout the world that lack access to electricity. At the moment, there are 1.2 billion people living on planet Earth with no power at all. And this is primarily for two reasons. Either A, it is too expensive, or B, they lack the means for such infrastructure. Now, the beauty about the Model A is that it allows the world's poorest to be self-reliant. You see, they no longer have to re rely on the United Nations or their government or charity organizations to provide them with basic necessities. They can now be independent. So there might be a time in the future where we can just generate electricity from temperature differences between our houses and the environment. And there might be a time in which our entire world will be powered by our body heat. Because that, my friends, is the power of thermoelectric energy. Thank you.